Welcome to this short video on advanced task management. I have a new project here and uh, I already have set my new task to be auto scheduled. Uh, let's enter a few tasks. Task A, task B, task C, task D, and task E. Let's make each of these take four days of time. What we're going to do now is we're going to link these tasks together. And let me show you a couple shortcuts for linking tasks. If you're just setting up simple finish to start relationships, we can actually select a range of tasks that we want to link, so say one through five. And if we're going to link them sequentially, we can, uh, once we have them selected, go up under task and we can click on this link button and that's going to just link the tasks together for us. So it's a quick and easy way that we can link tasks together, uh, in this case sequentially from the top of the list to the bottom of the list. I'm going to undo that because there are some times in which we may want to uh, not go sequentially, but we do have quite a number of finish to start linkages that we want to do. I'm going to hold down now the control key and I'm going to select uh, row 3, then I'm going to go to row 1, row 5, row 4, and then row 2. And then if I click link, you'll see that it's going to link these tasks in the order in which I had selected them while holding down the control key. Also, whether we've linked them automatically like this or whether we've linked them by putting in predecessor information into the individual tasks, we can unlink them in mass using that unlink button. Now you can see here that I already have some tasks that are off of my uh, calendar screen here and I can certainly hold down the shift key and then I use my little scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. There's another way that you can do that. You can also do a control G and it'll allow you to simply go to a particular task ID. So if I want to go to the part of the Gantt chart that shows me task C, I can simply select 3 and it will scroll me down to where I can see task 3. That's kind of a useful shortcut, especially when we get into very large projects. Let's look at this uh, duration aspect of our tasks here. We have by default days as the uh, period of time that we measure. We can also do this in hours, so 2H will give us hours. We can do it in weeks, 2W uh, will give us weeks. Uh, we can also do it in months, oops I'm sorry, 1MON will give us a month, 1MIN will give us minutes. Okay, I can't imagine any task where I actually want to schedule in minutes, but apparently it's possible. Let's go back to set these all to uh, four days, 4D. And we'll see here that uh, when we're, uh, this task A, which starts on Friday, it's going to end the next Wednesday because we have four working days. So this doesn't just include calendar days. We have uh, a calendar, the standard calendar, that says that we don't work on Saturday and Sunday. What we can also do is we can override that. So we can say four elapsed days or E days and then we will ignore those non-working times on the calendar. So you can also do that. You can say we want four E weeks. And so this particular task, task B now, if I go down a little bit, it will take four weeks and it will span, the working time will span over those Saturdays and Sundays. Now let's go back once again and use a couple of these skills we just learned. Uh, first of all, let's go to uh, four days again for our various tasks. Make sure they're all four days. And then we're going to unlink them in mass. And then we're going to go ahead and link them just from task A through task E. I just held down the shift key so I can select all those and link them together. I seem to be out of range in my Gantt chart, so I'm going to do a control G and go to task number one uh, in order to be able to see uh, the beginning of my project here. Now we can also have these relationships. For example, if you notice here, task B is related to ta task A by this finish to start relationship, which is shown here in the predecessor tab. 
But let's say that task A was uh, putting on the paint on our walls. And then we need to come in and we need to actually uh, put down uh, the carpet or put in the furniture. But we need some period of time to elapse between when we paint and when we actually start moving stuff in in order for the paint to dry. Let's say that the paint needs to dry for two days for it to be properly dry. Notice that what that does to our calendar. We now have this ending on the end of the day Thursday, but our next task is not going to start once again to the uh, beginning of Tuesday morning. Now that's all well and good, but we know to, that the paint drying, that's not an activity that just happens to happen during work days. That could also happen over the weekend, so we could certainly change our relationship here and say that um, that is going to be two E days or elapsed days. And notice how that changes our calendar. Yes, we end on a Thursday. We have two days, Friday and Saturday. Of course, this next task, task B, the actual work, can't start on uh, Sunday morning, so it starts on Monday morning. So it's a better way to enter that type of lag. Now let's look at uh, another one of these tasks here and enter another uh, type of lag. Let's say that task C, we find, could actually start three days after task B starts. So what we can do here is we look at the relationship on task C and we're going to change that to a start to start relationship with a lag of three days. Notice what that looks like. There's now a relationship from the start of task B to the start of task C and we have a lag time of three days built into this relationship. Okay, which is start start to be a little bit more clear, and it certainly is represented well in the Gantt chart. Let's look at another example of how we might use lag, and that's once again a type of relationship where we need something to occur, but we need it to occur in this case during working time. So let's say task C is actually ordering some equipment, and task D is actually uh, doing something with that equipment we may find that well it really doesn't take four days uh, to order the equipment there's really just one day of ordering but there's three days of lag until we actually get it it takes three working days until UPS or FedEx or whoever's delivering it actually gets these parts to us so we're going to change that to one day and we're going to change this relationship between D and C so that there is this built-in lag time. In this case, we're going to say three, and we will uh, three days, because UPS and FedEx, let's just say for the point of this example, are not going to be delivering on Saturday or Sunday or not be moving the package around. So we need actual three working days in here. Notice what has changed and why this is a much more realistic view of our project now. Uh, if we had four days of work actually assigned to task C, we're going to actually be using resources or tying up or allocating resources those, during those entire four days. But instead we know that our resources only need to be allocated during that first day and the subsequent days uh, we really don't have any resources devoted to this particular task. It's just that it's going to take a little while before we can start the next one. Now one of the things that we can do for a particular task is we can set a deadline for it. So let's say that uh, we just want to set a deadline for uh, uh, task C and this is not necessarily a hard and fast date but we want to just mark uh, the time at which we expect that equipment to arrive in our calendar. So uh, we're going to go over here to advanced and you can actually then set a deadline. So in this case, I'm going to set a deadline here of, uh, well, let's say April 4th. And you'll see on the graph how this has made a actual deadline indicator to in indicate when we expect to receive this particular project product. So this may trigger us to actually look and see, did we receive this by this particular date? 
and if not, maybe we need to track it or uh, do something to f figure out where that shipment is. So hopefully this video has given you some good tools that you can use for advanced task management.